Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and I recently got this. This is the Keychron Q1 keyboard, um, and I like it for a lot of reasons, but there's one little problem with it, and it's uh, these keys right here, these top two, put it right up here. Uh, this is the insert key, and this is the delete key, and I want these to be flipped. I want the delete key to be the top right button on my keyboard, and this is a great excuse for me to get into just a little deeper into the keyboard customization scene as I'm gonna to try to reprogram this keyboard to actually make that just how the keyboard behaves. Uh, with no like Mac OS or Windows tricks, I just want to reprogram the keyboard. So I'm gonna to try to do that today. I'm gonna to do it kind of in real time. So you're gonna see me struggle, but hopefully it'll give you a good idea for how this works. And this is just a very, very small change. I'm just flipping what two keys do, uh, but you can go much further with this. So let's just jump in and hopefully you'll learn something. Okay, so I'm here on my computer. I'm typing into the keyboard right now. And I've got a few relevant websites pulled up. I'm using the QMK configurator to create my configuration. Um, I've got the QMK toolbox over here, which is what you use to flash that new configuration onto your keyboard. And I've got a link to the Q1 user manual that Keychron provides. Um, they've actually got quite a bit here. So they have links to this. There's also an, an app called Via, um, which I haven't used, haven't looked into, but um, yeah, I'm just using uh, QMK because it's the first one that I heard about and people seem to like it. So links to all this will be in the description, but I basically, you get to the configurator and you want to find your keyboard. You want to find, um, it's a lot easier, it looks like, if your keyboard is on the list. Uh, so if you go into the list, they've got a decent number here. Like this actually seems like a lot, but I don't really know how many custom keywords are out there. Um, but I just searched for Q1 and there are three different versions here. It looks like the 102 is the ISO version. So this is like the European layout um, with different keys. Uh, there's the 101, which I don't quite know what this one is. They're all listed as NA. Um, but then there's the 100, which I'm pretty sure is mine. God help me if it's not. I think I'll screw up the board and I'll have to really fix things um, if I screw this up. But yeah, so this is the layout for um, my board. So this looks exactly like mine. The buttons are exactly the same. Everything looks great. Um, so this, I think, is the layout that we've got here. Um, so now I've got that. Uh, if there are multiple options for layouts for this, you can choose from them. There's only one here. Um, so I'm going to stick with that. And then you can give it a name. So I'll do um, ABC layout. I guess this is just so I can save it. Or I guess the name will be this if I export it. Um, but anyway, um, so what you can do here is uh, you can go ahead and map things. So if you have a keyboard that's not on the list, um, you can like click on a key and then hit the button on your keyboard and it's going to um, kind of put that there or show that there or this is going to do that. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh shoot, yeah, I screwed it up. So I've already screwed it up, so I actually put, accidentally put a cue there. So if I want to put escape back there, I hit the escape button. Um, for tab, I can make tab do an I, but I don't want to do that, I want to do tab as tab. Um, so anyway, these are already laid out perfectly because it's a uh, keyboard on their list. Um, an interesting thing to note is you've got these things over here called layers. And so there's layer zero, one, two, and three on this. And it turns out what these are, are different kind of modes your keyboard can be in. So we're on layer zero right now, which is kind of the default one. And you can see this is the layout of the keys. And this is just kind of the standard layout. This like just looks like what I'm looking at on the keyboard. So what's layer one? Layer one is what happens when you hold down the FN key. Uh, so that's the FN key, I'm kind of down uh, on the bottom right of the keyboard. That's the things you can do there. So there's like the RGB toggle, there's the RGB mode, brightness, like all that stuff can be changed. Um, and so that's actually a nice way for me to see all the controls for the lights on this keyboard. Um, but that's what happens when I hold down FN. What about two and three then? So two is actually the Windows layout. So there's a switch on the back of the Q1 where you can toggle between Mac layout and Windows layout. And so what that's actually doing is setting your different layers, it sounds like. So layer zero is Mac layout. Uh, layer one is Mac layout when holding the FN key. Layer two is the Windows layout. So when you flip it over to Windows, this is the layout. And layer three is, as you might expect, when you're holding down the FN key on Windows, these are the things that it does. So yeah, that's what's going on with all this. Um, and so basically, again, you could totally change these. You can add more. I don't know how that's going to work, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to make a very simple change. And so I want to swap, delete, and insert, right? So to do that is actually really easy. So all I do is click and drag. Delete is over here. Insert is over here. And I think that's it. <laughs> so I think that should be it. Um, another quick thing I'll note is that if your colors look different here, 
There's a drop down here with a whole bunch of different themes you can use. Um, it doesn't really change the functionality, it just changes how the keyboard looks. Doesn't matter. So um, let's go ahead and just say, yeah, that's it. Um, so now that's the only change I wanna make, again, you can go much further than this if you'd like. Um, I can download this as a JSON file. So I'm just gonna save it, do this automatically. Um, and so that's saved an ABC layout. Yeah, ABC underscore layout.json. And it looks like I can go ahead and reload this at a later point if I want to kind of like make adjustments based on this layout. Again, making one change, so I don't really need to do this. Um, there's some stuff here where I can test keyboard input so I can like type P and see what it thinks that is. And there's kind of a console down here showing um, I could do ABC and there we go. I clicked all of them and it looks like you can just kind of like confirm do all the buttons show up here as I'd expect them to. Um, right. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of how the, all that works. We don't really need that. Um, this will clear your key map. Are you sure you want to load? Yes, I guess so. Okay. So for whatever reason, you kind of go back. This would be a good chance for me to try to uh, upload and see if it flips them. So I could just drag it, but let's see if the upload works. Yeah. Um, let's go to downloads, ABC layout, done. There we go, that did work. Um, it loaded four layers and insert and delete are in the correct spot now. And I should still see that's that one. This is the Windows layout and the Windows FN. Okay, so this is what I want now. So now what I wanna do is I want to compile. So I'm compiling the uh, key map, it's called. So this is running, it's running on their server. Um, so it's just gonna take as long as their server is going to take to do it. And what this should give me at the end is a download where I can download. Um, I'll just have a download that I can use with this uh, QMK toolbox to uh, go ahead and change the key mappings. So this is taking a second. Uh, we're just kind of waiting. You can see the console here in the background, I think. Yeah, there we go. So it looks like it's about done. So it compiled, it's all done. Uh, there we go. And now how do I get it? Okay, here we go. Download the firmware. There we go. So I'm downloading the firmware. Uh, I want to leave the page. Yeah, that's fine. Um, we're going to save it. It's a .hex file. And that's in my downloads folder now. So we'll grab that in a minute. So now we need to actually flash this to the keyboard. So the keyboard hasn't changed yet. So when I go to the GMK or QMK toolbox GitHub page, again, linked in the description, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Um, ultimately, what I want to do here is I want to go to the releases page and I'm not going to do the beta. I don't want a beta <laughs> for my keyboard software. Um, on Mac OS, I'm going to download the qmk.toolbox.package, PKG, uh, and on Windows, you would do the qmk underscore toolbox.exe um, or the install. Actually, I don't know. I'm actually not sure on Windows. So on Mac OS, I know for sure it's this one. I don't know about Windows. Hopefully another video can help with that. So, um, sorry. <laughs> um, so we can get rid of my browser here and I actually have already downloaded it. So I'm gonna double click it and depending on your Mac OS settings, it might uh, warn you about this and say, I can't open this because it's not from a trusted developer. This is where you get into your own decision-making whether you wanna trust it or not. Um, if you decide you do, you wanna right click it and you wanna do open. And now it's gonna show you that same dialog, but there's an open option. So we're gonna say, do that. So now we're gonna run the installer and if this borks my computer somehow, always uh, just a tip for macOS, whenever you're doing an installer through a uh, PKG file like this, um, you want to hit customize to make sure it's not installing other things. Like it, is, it isn't as us usually the case anymore, but it used to be like you would see like Yahoo toolbars and you just see like other junk here um, and you could uncheck those. But this is just installing the QMK toolbox. So we'll go ahead. Um, there we go. Installation was successful. And so I should just be able to search for uh, QMK toolbox. This is in my applications folder. And here we go. So this looks like there's not a lot here. So this should be easy. I could read the instructions. I'm not going to. <laughs> um, and so click open or drag to window to select file. Okay, so I'm gonna say open. And we're gonna open the Keychron Q1 Rev 100 ABC layout.hex. So there we go. So that's the file. Um, what is this? At mega32u4. 
gonna be honest, I have no idea. And this is AVR only, I have no idea what this is. Okay, so I figured out the issue. Um, <laughs> first, um, I found this comment on the GitHub page from September uh, where someone was running into the same issue I was. And it turns out you need to just don't even worry about that. Just put your uh, uh, keyboard into uh, what are they called? Bootloader mode. Um, and then click the flash button in the configurator. My button is not there and I don't um, know what, how to get in bootloader mode. If I'd read the instructions, I could read the instructions. I'm not going to, as I would have seen here, factory reset. Um, I need to download the right firmware, which is that uh, hex file. Um, I need to remove the space bar. So right here, uh, you can kind of see that. I'll go into uh, macro mode. There it is inside the keyboard. We're going real close. Love macro mode on the new iPhone. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's the button I need to press and hold while I am uh, restarting the uh, or I'm plugging it in. So let me go ahead and it's actually very small. So I need something small to press it with. That's not metal. Um, of course. <laughs> okay, this will work. So I'm going to use this little bit of the uh, an Apple Watch band. I'm just going to poke that in there. So. Okay, so I just did it, and there's a red light that just turned on in there, so it looks like that worked. Um, and so now, if I go here, there we go. So I've got the flash option. I'm going to keep my camera here just so you can see the light. Um, and so, okay, so here's my file, and here we go. It's connected. It does say in the uh, instructions here to make sure you're using the at mega 32u4, at mega 32u4. Cool. Here's the hex, and then flash. Let's see what happens. Attempting flash, please don't remove the device. Okay, um, erasing flash success, checking memory, empty force. Good, good. And now this is lit up, all my lights are lit up. Okay, did this work? <laughs> um, let's find out. Okay, so it's plugged in and everything. Let me see if I can quit. That worked, and now let me just get my key in here, and I'm going to hit the insert button. I'll get this going as well. I'm going to hit the insert button and see if it deletes. It does. Yes. Okay. It totally worked. So I flipped these. So now all I have to do is I'm going to... My keycap puller doesn't work <sighs> great in these kind of corner pieces. I'm an idiot. I'm just going to pull them off. <laughs> I didn't need to do anything. So, okay, delete key. You go right there. Insert key. You go. Oh, oh boy. Right there. I will never use you, but now I use you all the time, and you're right on the edge where I want you to be. <sighs> it worked. That's very exciting. Okay, so that was very simple. Like, let's. Does everything else work kind of how I would expect it to? That's an F3. Um, am I? Yeah, I'm in Mac mode. Um, do my media keys still work? That still works. Um, that's F4, F3. That's brightness. Those work. I seem to have lost F3 and F4. Those don't seem to work as they used to. Um, so I'm going to have to see about that. Um, there's probably some mapping that I have to do there, uh, but I never use those keys on purpose anyway. I guess I do, do use F3, so I will have to figure that one out. But yeah, um, that actually kind of worked. So I am super excited that I was able to fix it myself. I'm um, getting my key or my uh, space key back on there. There we go. Um, but it totally worked. It's definitely a slightly scary thing to do to do it, but um, it worked smoothly. And yeah, I don't really, I didn't really have any issues, which is great. Um, so yeah, that's it for me today, I think. Uh, kind of a, I don't know, anticlimactic. I just don't know how to wrap it up. But that's how you um, do it. That's how I just did it live <laughs> on video. And uh, yeah, hopefully this was helpful and kind of demystifying how this all works. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to see with this keyboard because it's really cool to do this sort of thing and I'm looking forward to do a little bit more if I can. So thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.